good. You're not going to let us see your pink eye? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I didn't even mean to not have the video on. I actually, I, it came on. That's that's nice. That's a nice. I haven't been on Zoom in so long. That's a nice new addition that they now. Um, they don't start you on the video. They start you off video. Yeah, that's very. You have to put yourself. Okay, and we're live. Yeah. <laughs> there I am. These are my little eyes. Yeah, it's lovely. And before I haven't had this since I was like six. Uh, <laughs> still we're live. We've been live. All right, Katie, so um, Scott will chair the meeting, right? Awesome. Yes, that sounds great. I just think that's better with everybody else in the room. Okay. Maybe not. All right. <laughs> if that's all right with everybody else. Absolutely. Okay, well, welcome to the uh, Public Services and Facilities Committee meeting. We're calling the meeting to order and acknowledge that the press and the public have been duly notified of the meeting in accordance with the Freedom of Information Act. And before we get started on anything, I think we should all just wish uh, Douglas a happy birthday. Okay. We'll spare everybody the singing part, I guess. Uh, and, then, and, and the number, please. And the number. <laughs> I think we said 28 was about to yeah. Yeah. Um Are there any citizens' comments? No, sir. Okay. Uh, why don't we move on to approval of the previous uh, meeting's minutes. Do I hear a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second? Second. All, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All right, let's move on to old business. Uh, we're going to get an update on the 41st Avenue drainage outfall project. You want Do me you to wanna, that? Yeah. Yep. So uh, the, I'm going to pull up the aerial of the of the area okay. so we can talk about the parking as well so the <clears throat> the project is progressing well I think the they have had numerous um, delays due to the power poles the intracoastal waterway Large structure at the end to be built. Oh, uh, has to play structure the now to a point where they are going to divide one crew is going to crystal end, the other crew is going to work at the Waterway Boulevard um, intersection. That's another major portion of the work still to be done yet, is they have to extend under Waterway Boulevard, under Waterway Boulevard. They told us last week that they to close Waterway Boulevard should be kind of a now begin, uh, um, but again at that intersection, uh, a Dominion. The, the pipes are, are they've added a power plans were done, and so in the course. As luck would have it, they put the pole right in the long, wrong location, so they're having to modify either the pole or the, the pipes as they go across the street, and they're, they're kind of ironing that detail out now, but should have a solution here in the next day or so and allow them to start cutting across that road, close the road, get that work done. Uh, and at the same time, as I said, be working at the very end of the... Uh, um, I will say that we have... The, the contractor in the city has been um, coordinating with the restaurant um, owners on the use of that lot. Um, we have, it has extended longer than what we had originally expected and the restaurant has been agreeable to kind of a transition um, period that we're in now. And the, the image on the screen that Desiree has put up is the latest Kind of agreement with the with that the con that the contractors worked out with the restaurant tenants, where um, the section behind the blue line to the right of the blue line is is the section that the contractor is going to continue to work through, and then the gray um, the gray area there is going to is being turned over to the restaurant. So we're still in a little bit of transition between the restaurant and the contractor but we're we're working through that and people are um, people are working well together so Douglas do you have a uh, Douglas, top, Douglas, oh, Douglas, go ahead, how does that gray area compare to the previous um, park? 
the previous employee parking? Compared to what I'm looking at is the gray area now. It looks to be about the same size as that. Yes, it is. So the, so the main difference there between what they've historically had and um, today is really the area right at the edge of the water where you can see there's a an excavator and a and a box in that photo. That corner. That corner is new. They they have historically and traditionally had access and the use of that corner that they currently don't have. Uh, and the contractor needs that area to be working on building the head wall. So, so that's the main in difference. Blue is essentially the area that is now part. It, it's part of the ditch that just got covered. That's correct. Yeah, the, the line at the edge of the that's ditch. Like, that's like our property. Correct. Yes. Yeah, pretty much that's everything in blue. Property. Not that, that blue area is not Marina Mace at all, correct? correct. That's correct. Is the, okay. what about where the red line goes? Uh, is it where the red line goes? Is that little blue area where the storage box is on this side? Is that? That is that's traditionally. That's also the city. That's city. Under this agreement, traditionally, that is the restaurants. Where the where the storage container is. Oh. No. Up at 41st? At, at correct. the top the area where it, where it juts out, that's still city. That's correct. Okay. That is traditionally the city's area as well. So the only real, you know, the, the only real area of significance that's not traditionally uh, the city's is right at the water's edge where that all those cones and the connex box and the excavator is parked. So if you essentially that red line along the ditch, if you you know continue that that down to the bulkhead, all of the area to the left of that line would be part of the employee lot. Everything to the other side would be new city property, part of the ditch that that was covered. Okay. Good. So we're, we're pretty much we're pretty much out of the way. I mean, for, other close. than that one little spot. Yeah, I think we're close to it. Yeah, I think we're we're yeah. close to being yeah. out of the way. I don't and, know if um, the restaurant would necessarily see it that way. I mean, I know it's it has been of as you all know if you've been down there, it's an extremely busy corner of the world between the the um, dock work, <clears throat> this work. I mean, it is it is very very busy. So. So we've extended. Be, that's the problem. The problem was trying to be organized and do it all at once. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Trying to do when it's slow, but it's a lot of work at once in one small area. So the agreement that the city entered into with the Marina Restaurant has been extended, and that agreement essentially um, uh, gives uh, a, a, essentially a credit for what they pay the city for the exclusive use of that lot. Um, you know, they, they're not paying for that. Um, we've extended it another month. And what we've also done. So through May, Desiree, or through April? Through the end of April. Um, Will we need to go through May, you think? or? Well, the contractor told us last week that they believe six more weeks and they'll be completely out. So that's barring any, you know, significant rain event that may delay them. Um, but they feel really comfortable about the, the six weeks. So we'll wait and see, and see where we are mid-April to see whether we need to extend it for a week or two. But the benefit of the the piping is that they keep work, they keep storing equipment in the ditched area, the newly ditched and covered area. So they'll be moving out of that corner what's left, um, hopefully you know within those six weeks. Um, what we've also done is you all recall we have 16 uh, resident only parking spaces on in the shared lot, so on the other side of that employee lot. All of the parking spaces that that abut the employee lot, those signs have been covered to give the restaurant more flexibility to use that space as well. Um, the resident-only parking spaces that are parallel to the intercoastal, they're still there. So we have four that are still available for residents, um, but the other ones have been have been covered um, again to to allow the restaurant to use it for their employees while we're. Um, while we're still doing this, this this work. Can you go back to the timeline? Uh, I know we've had a lot of resident inquiries about the waterway closure, and I don't know if that's, um, you know, you said it might be within the next couple of weeks, but then how long would it be closed for and detour and that, that kind the, of thing? They're estimating two weeks closed, um, and, and we have seen that go both ways. We've seen it be woefully inaccurate to our detriment and we've seen it go quicker. So they've told us two weeks. 
I would take take that answer with a grain it of salt. It could change. Could change. It's subject to change. Is that something? Uh, now we were updating this on our city website. I think mm -hmm. there was some yeah. stuff. Yes, and we're uh, putting it on social and also using Sunny to send out alerts about the closure. Okay. Did, and I think last week we talked. You had some questions about the elevation oh, of yes. the ditch. Yes, that's right too. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, Douglas, could you speak to that? Yes. Yeah, so, so the original plans do show. Um, I, I would say a moderate, a moderate um, shift in um, in elevation, and I would say it's kind of a foot, two feet, maybe. That would be a, a hump at the so the parking lot increases in elevation as it gets closer to the water, and it kind of has a mound there that I think is an old an old mound with trees. And the final plan show that mound still there. Uh, we don't think that it is a, and right now, if you were to go out there, it's a, you know, it's an unsafe drop from the edge of the elevation of the parking lot into the project area. Where the red line is? Sorry. Yes, yeah. where that red line is. It's probably a three, three foot drop there now. Uh, the, the final plans do show a gradual um, kind of slope towards those drains and those drains will be obviously lower because they need to <coughs> catch the storm water so they will be below that elevation um, but we don't think it'll be unsafe when it's finished do a site visit and see what the conditions warrant basically where that red line is we would <coughs> we would want to either put parking stops if if it's not much of a of a kind of depression or if it's significant, we think it could damage a vehicle, we probably would put a fence, uh, something along that red line to keep, you know, the parking from coming into that area. Because it's just, at this time, it's not designed or uh, contemplated for parking. And we, ha we still haven't, we're obviously working through what the final, um, if there will be some change of parking in that corner. Uh, and at that time, there would need to be some grading to make it kind of flow uh, if that's the ultimate the ultimate goal is to join those two areas for parking we'll need to grade it to make that happen and again to your point it would require a new layout for that area so the city gains access to that new new ditched uh, covered area right yeah it'll be gravel so it's going to be <coughs> kind of a graveled area uh, adjacent to the parking lot but it'll be slightly depressed from the current uh, grades down there. And so to make it available for parking, you're saying it would probably require some regrading. It's going to be, it would be gravel and you'd need access. Right. Correct. And we have in the FY25 budget, we have $150,000 budgeted for a parking lot reconfiguration <clears throat> to cover whatever the, what the city, what would be the city's portion of whatever uh, we ultimately decide um, for that corner. Would cover that too? Um, that's a that's a very high level placeholder. We okay. uh, definitely. Okay, just ask it. <laughs> you know, the last time we did, um, Douglas, remind. Um, do you recall it was sixty thousand dollars what we paid before yes. before the city um, before the restaurant to that was part of the agreement between the city and the restaurant to make improvements to that employee lot um, when we entered into that lease agreement so 60,000 I think 150 should be it's a good good educated guess thank you any more discussion on this agenda item Blair no, no. can I one comment Douglas Doug, uh, Donnie use your mic please um, the mound that you're referring to uh, I recall you know the greenery mm -hmm. trailer was there mm -hmm. Have we tested that to see if there's a concrete wall up underneath that? There was, yeah, well, there was a slab and a wall. There was a bunch of concrete pulled okay. out when they, that 50,000 you're talking about, mm -hmm. a lot of that was demolishing all that old debris, pulling yeah. that out of there. All right. Uh, next agenda item is the discussion of implementing parking fees on Marina Shared Parking Lot and new right of way parking along. The pipe ditch. So um, yes, I'll, I'll um, lay, lay the foundation of this conversation. Um, so as you all know, we share the shared parking lot at the marina between the city and the restaurant. 
Um, last year, you recall, the city entered into a temporary agreement with them uh, during the season to have a parking attendant there Thursdays through the weekend. Um, the parking was shared between um, residents and marina patrons. The trailer parking spaces in the middle were exclusively um, available to residents who had boats and trailers. Um, and after a certain time, I believe it was 3 p.m., those parking spaces, as they became available, the, the, the middle spaces, the trailer spaces in the middle, um, as they became available, they became um, available to the restaurant for their patrons throughout the evening. Um, we do not have a similar agreement for this season. Um, we have been working, as you all know, on a parking, a new parking layout to be agreed on by the city and the restaurant for over two years now. We haven't, we haven't agreed to anything yet. Um, obviously, right now the, the the lot is being used. It's it's very heavily used with because of these parking, um, these two projects, the public dock and the ditch project. Um, but we anticipate again in the next several weeks those projects being completed, and then this shared parking lot will need to be managed by the city. It's owned and managed by the city, shared with the restaurant. So up until the, the the point where we agree on a new parking layout and separate, which was the original goal of a new parking layout for the city to have its own parking lot, the restaurant would have its own parking lot, and there would be no sharing component to any of those spaces, um, then we have to agree on how that area is going to be managed this season. Um, we now have a parking management company that manages and, enforce it and, and enforces the parking on Front Beach and Island Wide, so there would be an opportunity for, to, for the city to include that there. Um, but we don't have any fees associated with the shared lot, um, and we would need to establish those. Um, if it's the will of the city to do so. Um, also, we know that the 41st Avenue drainage ditch project will create an uh, additional right-of-way parking um, along 41st between Waterway. There's a section between Waterway and a little north of the fire station that there's no parking currently, and we would maintain that to allow the trucks to come in and out of the station. But past that area, there will be um, availability for parking. So we would need to establish how those, how that parking is going to be utilized. Um, so that's the part, the reason for this conversation, um, to get a feel from the committee about what the goal is for managing parking in the shared lot and on the public right of way on 41st. And just note that section of right of way is owned by the city. It's not an SDOT road. So are they two separate? I mean, is the shared parking something we'd have to work with the tenant and the part 41st, that's something we can do on our own? or how Correct. Do we well, the shared parking, uh, the only um, restrictions on the shared lot that we have with the restaurant per their lease <coughs> is that the parking needs to be free after 8 p.m. and that the spaces are first come, first serve. But that's pretty much it. Okay. There is no restriction on charging for parking before 8 p.m. I would expect that the restaurant's position is going is the parking should be free or they're going to comp the parking for anybody going to their place we, is my expectation. I don't you know. You don't know. We hadn't had that conversation with no. the restaurant. Okay. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like uh, we definitely need to have a conversation with them. I mean, we, we need to... I, 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 think that we do need to have some sort of paid, if we're going to have it, we're not going to be able to do it the way we did it last year um, with the tenant and all of that, so we're going to have to have some other way of managing that lot, um, but I do think it would be helpful if we sat down with them and, I mean, if we, for instance, how are we going to do the trailers, um, you know, I mean, that, 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 that last summer's agreement was um, a bit on the complicated side, I think. Um, <laughs> the management of it. Um, so I would love to come up with something that might be better. Um, I kind of feel like that's that is a conversation that we need to have with the restaurant people. Um, but I, I think I, I totally understand where you're coming from, and that we do need to. We obviously do need to have that paid. Um, 
And when it comes to the ditch, I, yeah, that I feel like that also is going to need to, or it's just going to all be taken up by the marina. So I think to um, Blair, to your point, I mean, and maybe to Katie, should we defer the discussion on the shared parking piece from until we can get with a restaurant and get a resolution on how we're going to operate this summer? But um, I mean, I would be all for if we're looking at potentially looking at paid parking on the 41st strip. That's something that I, you know, I could certainly get behind. Um, yeah, I think Blair, yeah, you're probably right. The, the the restaurant will probably feel like charging their customers might not be the the best for their business. But there's a, there's there's a way obviously around that. I mean, that can be figured out. But 41st, absolutely, I think we should start charging. So you know, and I guess we have been keeping in mind that the uh, marina operator does charge to park in the lot. And I think kind of a starting point that we thought about was just mirroring or, or mm -hmm. replicating their fees. So the, a patron, there wasn't a kind of incentive to go to one space over the other. So kind of keep the fee structure the same as the marina, uh, <coughs> the marina fee structure. What is that? Do you know? $20 per day, first hour is free, and residents with a decal park for free. Look at you. For That's a car, and then... That's a car, and it's then a, trailer. a trailer. Go ahead. I'll, I'll go ahead and <laughs> share that, too. It's $50 for non-residents for a trailer to park. Residents park there well, for free. There wouldn't be trailer parking on 41st. Not on 41st. No, this is on the, the shared lot. In the shared lot. lot. And, I mean, it would seem as though... It seems that you all would be interested in figuring out how to make patrons to the restaurant free or would that so if we could come up with a and I think they've mentioned a method to kind of verify a patron's parking space but would that be a starting point charge charge everywhere the same as the marina parking lot with the kind of caveat that we we discuss with the restaurant how to validate their patrons. So you said the parking vendor can validate. I'm not sure how that would work between PCI and the and the service that's traditionally been in the parking lot. I think we'd need to work out how that would mm -hmm. work, but. Um, Kind of wanted to have this conversation before we so i guess the question i'd have then is how would you it, i think the assumption would be that if somebody's going to the marina they're either launching their boat or they're going for the park the uh restaurant or their residence so i'm not sure what i mean when you look at that what's left for who would be charged for being a paid parking would it be a trailer only um you know i, I think or, so or the if they're going is, to the park i think it's to prevent people from to prevent the marina people from saying, oh, look, I can park over free. here. It's 20 bucks right. a day to park in the marina lot, but it's free over here. Yep. I think that that that's, that's the idea, right? Yep. Right. Yeah, well, we, and in a way to control it could be, you know, if, there, if you're going to, a, to the restaurant, the first two hours are free. I mean, I... I the, the, that shared lot before the city took it over, and it was managed by the marina operator, there was shared, there was shared parking, but it was paid parking. Yeah. So no, I, I patrons think, would, would pay to park. Um, I think we can have an arrangement where if, if we have a, the ability with the app to give a you know, few hours for free for the restaurant patrons to accommodate that. Um, the, the challenge with the trailer parking, per se, is unless we agree, both agree on making the trailer parking resident only, and we can sign it, but the, the, the restaurant would have to agree, we believe the restaurant would have to agree to that because we would, it, would be a, it would be a reserved parking space, essentially, if, if it's only available for residents. One way of going around that is it's free for residents and then you non-residents pay $50. Um, yeah, mirroring, mirroring what the marina is doing for that kind of traffic, I think, makes that does solve, I think, Katie, what you were saying about people parking for free instead of parking over at the marina. Correct. And if, if it's a buck, I mean, if it's an hour free and then charging, that give, would give any restaurant patron <coughs> time to walk into the restaurant. There could be a barcode you scan, and it gives you another hour. Mm -hmm. For two hours free for restaurant. I mean, it, it, yeah, I think this, it's a pretty easy way of doing that, yeah. like app based. Because mm -hmm. I'm not. So, like Patriot's point, I think, still uses that, you know, you have to take your little sticker in there and get it validated, which mm -hmm. seems somewhat 
antiquated. Um, so I, I think our parking, our parking, our new parking company, I'm sure has a, mm -hmm. a better way of doing that, yeah. I would hope. But as, as we indicated, <laughs> the starting point would be mirroring the rates mm -hmm. and finding a way to give the restaurant patrons, you know, free parking. Free access. Yeah. Okay. Maybe All right. So. I think that, and then for the for the the ditch, um, what ditch. are we thinking just to mirror that also? Time, and like times and how? Mm -hmm. What's what are the thoughts on that? I think that was our thought. Was yeah. Same, same thing, mirroring the marina's rates would obviously be no no trailers could fit in there, but it would just mirror the the marina rates. And how would we? Uh, I think one of the other concerns from some of the folks were the overnight parking. The yeah, how would we address that? Minimum minimal or maximum time, perhaps in a slot or somehow. So we don't regulate overnight parking in any other public right of way. Um, Currently, uh, other than trailers, they're not allowed to be parked for more than a certain time. Um, I think the marina does allow, I think the marina allows overnight parking on, for on their some side. additional rate. I don't know if it's more than $20 a day, but I think theoretically, if you go to the marina and you just pay, Keep you paying. Know, $20 a day, you would be okay to leave it overnight. I think that's something we need to address, I think, but there are loitering issues, there's Goat Island issues, there's Dewey's Island issues. We can't have people parking overnight over there. I mean, that could be codified, right? I mean, we could, that, that would be up to us to decide, you know, yeah. what rules would apply. We can certainly say no overnight parking and a daily rate. Um, you know, they could move the vehicle at night and place it back in the morning. There's no way of you know that would be no overnight but <laughs> they no, could but, do that but that's that, that's at least a start but i yeah. think we need we have to do that i mean i, I would think I've always, I've always had somewhat of an issue with the no overnight um because for the idea that the person who's at the restaurant and wants to do the responsible thing and take an uber home and leave their car um so i, I kind yeah. of like the idea of charging just charging more you know if you if you happen to leave your car there one night that's whatever, but, you know, if, if the car's left there more time than that, um, or charging just, you know, a, a larger fee for an overnight, I mean, it, I think as long as we're charging for it, I don't think that, you know, like the Goat Island people aren't, I mean, they, they were using it because it was free. I think if it was charged, that would be a different story. I think from a management perspective, that would be challenging because you, we don't know if the same parking attendant that worked on a Friday afternoon is there Saturday morning, and how would they know if that car stayed overnight? I don't know. I think it, it might be challenging to just have a different fee if you're staying overnight. Um, well, I guess that means that you just charge new every day. Like if there's a car, yeah, just you know. keep it. <laughs> it's a one day pass. And so if, yeah. if you're, and I was just gonna say know, here again, this might be if something. Cars there, you get charged again, and if you don't pay, you get a ticket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we might want to ask the parking vendor. I'm sure they've seen yeah. these kinds of situations before. How they might yeah. suggest managing it. We'll work with them on an idea based on the discussion yeah. we had today. No overnight parking, mirroring rates, and finding ways to allow restaurant patrons to park in the shared lot at no cost for a number of hours potentially. Any more discussion on this item? No. All right, let's move on. Uh, review of the 25 budget for Public Works Department, Recreation, Drainage, Front Beach, Beach and Marina. All right, so <clears throat> after the budget workshop, we have been discussing with every committee, particularly the 10-year capital plan, and having discussions about the large expenditures that are planned in the out years and making sure that those reflect um, the committees and the council's uh, plan for the city. <clears throat> for the recreation department, um, you can see what we've listed here, the 10-year capital plan as you've seen it before. Um, the document shows in green those um, expenditures or projects initiatives that have been deferred to a 
outer year. In blue, you see the expenditures that have changed, and it's probably due to updated estimates and numbers as we get closer to when they're about to be replaced or purchased. And then in red, you see the additions to the 10-year capital plan included in the FY25 budget compared to the 10-year capital plan as you had seen it last year. <clears throat> For the Recreation Department, the only addition to the 10-year capital plan is the playground equipment. Um, this is the 5 to 10 to 12 big toy and toddler toy. And that $500,000 um, cost estimate includes the pour and play surfacing. So replacing most of the mulch that is in that area with this foam type material um, that you see now across many playgrounds in, in our area. Um, Carrie put together this presentation. So Carrie, could you kind of walk us through um, these pictures that show the condition of the, of the playground and, and the reason why it's being requested for replacement in FY25? Okay, so the playground, um, in this picture you see the, the main three pieces that we're looking at replacing um, and we'll go through. Uh, but we do have national playground standards that we have to be um, in compliance with or obviously, um, you know, we're looking at some liability issues. Oh, you have I it. Have I'm it. sorry. I think I have it. <laughs> okay, so the first piece is the toddler toy. It was purchased in 1998. Um, and so this is kind of what we're looking at basically through all the pieces of equipment. Um, so the brackets that hold the decking in place, and obviously it's been a great piece of equipment. We've had it since 1998. Um, but just with our weather, the rust, the salt air, um, it's getting to a point of the age of the equipment and repairing it is becoming more difficult to get the pieces that we would need to replace um, and just the jagged edges of the deckings uh, with little fingers and this is our smallest piece, our two to five year olds. Um, so they go under this, you know, through it. Um, it won't change. Maybe point Try point at yeah. the There we go. Um, so these pieces are the roof on the toddler um, toy. So the brackets that are holding the roof together, you can see that they're starting to rust as well. And then this is a side panel uh, where the slide. So again, it's you know it's just the weather and wear and tear. Um, so it comes to a point of how much are we going to replace on a 1998 piece of equipment versus a repair versus re replace? Um, and so those are. Um, Try point there. there we go. So the big toy, which is the biggest piece, this is a five to twelve year old piece purchased in 2003, um, and it's going to look um, the same. So. The stairs here, that is uh, one piece. So you have to replace that whole stair decking piece. It's not just to replace the piece of decking where the, the rubber foaming's coming up that is a trip hazard, um, little fingers getting into. Um, this lily pad unit, we've already had to um, do some welding on it to repair some of um, the pieces so they stay together. So obviously once we start repairing stuff like that, it already becomes an issue. Um, and you can't really see very well on here, but so on the brackets on the top and the bottom, again with the rust and just the metal wearing and rubbing on each other, it, it used to be a lot thicker and now it is very um, thin. So what's happening is they're just snapping as kids are playing on them. So, so that unit. Um, again, decking, and that decking would go to that lily pad unit and to the other um, crossbar unit. Um, and again, these are brackets that hold decking in place um, to the slide. <clears throat> this picture on the bottom left is actually the slide um, bracket that holds, then the bottom right hand picture shows you the whole piece. And so that's just what we're seeing kind of everywhere is just the rust is getting to um, the bolts. The top left-hand bracket is actually a lower pull-up bar. So any of those brackets that you see should actually close 
all together so fingers aren't getting stuck. And there, Um, and this will be the third piece, uh, Spiderweb, purchased in 06. And again, it, this is going to look a lot like the lily pad unit with the metal brackets um, and the wear and tear of the metal thinning for, for, for where they'll snap. Um, those two post brackets that are in the middle picture, um, so kids crawl up the, you know, up that part. So those posts are actually where kids' hands would be, so the rest, um, rest around all the bolts that are holding the webbing in place, and then the webbing is actually started to shred. That's just one picture I took, but it looks like that in multiple places. Um, so this is just kind of what we're looking at, and that's all of them. There's um, some more pictures, but they kind of all look the same. Are, are you are you suggesting we replace the equipment with the same manufacturer? Um, so that would go out to bid. They've been a great manufacturer to work with. Again, that equipment's lasted. All right. Seems, seems to me we need to look for somebody else. It's more saltwater friendly. Well, I, mean, that's I mean, pretty good. That's that's pretty that's, good that's for I was kind of thinking the opposite that it, it you got Most almost the, thirty years out of something in a saltwater. Um, out of one of them. Out of out of one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and I've talked to those same people, that, um, and I've talked to another company that we're actually impressed that they've lasted out here as long as they have. So that could be something that we look into uh, for sure and go with other areas. I mean, obviously, there's tons of coastal areas that have playgrounds, right? Sure. Um, so, Carrie, uh, Carrie, could you speak to that total amount, 500000 Um about 200,000 is associated with a poor and play Correct. and three. So just speak yes. to what, so, what that 500 includes. So the main three pieces, what we're looking at for removal installation would be to replace those three, and that was going to be around 300,000. The 200,000 would be for the poor and play surface. And again, like Desiree said, the poor and play surface would not do the whole playground. Our playground is very big. We've also included some trees in our playground just for shade coverage. And you wouldn't want to do that rubber poor and play around the trees. So they would design um, most likely that the pour and play would go around the newest features that we just put in, and it would be a mix of mulch and the rubberized surface. Forgive me for my sticker shop, mm -hmm. but these these pieces are a hundred thousand bucks a piece, roughly. Really? Yeah. Well, you have to think of removal and installation too, um, and certified playground. People have to install it to keep the warranty and liability. And is in there place. anything? Is there anything? I mean, wrong with the current surface that we need to go to a new so, warm play? Or I mean, a, a, that is just if if I were to if I were to say anything, I, we've had the certified mulch forever and a day. Has it worked? Yes. Has this year been difficult? A little bit, you're right, just like everything else with the rain that we've had. We've probably lost more mulch this year than we have in previous years. Has the surface worked? It has. Um, if we were to look at doing one thing, the playground pieces, I would say, are most important, and we could look at the porn play in another year. So it could be um, phased in. So it could be phased in. Be phased in. Uh, but I, I like, in my opinion, I think, that, I think that's a great idea. And It'll also kind of give us an idea of the space and, like you're saying, with the trees and, you know, it might it might actually be end up being we decide that the poor place would be better in one area and not in another. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I just kind of feel like that, yeah. especially and from a cost perspective. But I think it also might make sense right. from just uh, seeing how it plays out. <laughs> <laughs> right, and, but you know, for most for most important for me, those the playground pieces are what really need mm -hmm. to be. And what um, would it cost? Her, I mean, I I know these are old pieces, but have we looked at and just for reference, what would it take to have somebody come in and go end to end and just basically repair these brackets and things to of repair? That I and mean, I don't even know if you can get the parts. So um, mm -hmm. it took us about six months to get twelve brackets last year. So we have replaced the ones that we can replace. Some of them are just rusted to the point that we can't get them off. <laughs> um, or they're not making them the exact same way to support the decking and the bracket where it needs to be. Um, so, you know, it's, repairing is just 
I mean, I would I would just be interested for reference. What would it? I don't know if we can get. A I quick, could. Somebody I could call a quick the wrap and, say, and yeah, see. And say how much would it take to just come out, take a look at this thing, and get rid of all the rusty parts and replace them. I don't know if that'd be three hundred thousand or not, but um, probably not. Any, any other reason? I'm you know I think at some point we might need to look at replacing the equipment, but there are all the other budget challenges we have. This is a really nice thing to have, but is it you know is it something that we actually have to have right now, or can we defer it a, a little bit? So it'd just be nice to have that reference information. I can um, call yeah. her up and see if we can get those numbers. Okay. And Carrie, is there? Perfect. Do we? Even if we could. Go. Even if we could do that, let, let's say it was fifty thousand, which probably would end up being more. I mean, then we're putting fifty thousand dollars into a piece of equipment where the piece that you're attaching it to is is you know getting on the old side too i mean a 30 30 years for something out in this environment is incredible <laughs> i mean you know the, the other stuff we're looking at it's 20 you know basically 20 years um oh, i agree with you i mean yeah. that's yeah. I, I it's just a reference i feel like that and i also feel like this is um so uh, you know that that equipment is used all the time constantly and most Leave. I mean, I, I know people come from all over and use it, but it is heavily resonant, used, um, and appreciated. Um, I mean, I, you know, we, we spent $100,000 on a memorial downtown Charleston last year. Um, I, I feel like we need to, to make it so this equipment is, is good and functional and safe for the children that live out here. And use it all the time. Yeah, I agree, and I think it looks outdated. Just it does. It, yeah. it looks outdated, and you look at you know the city of North Charleston spent forty million dollars, wasn't it, in their you know new wow. park, and it's and I, my you know they they made it a point to make it ADA compliant. I'm I think this would be an opportunity. Could one of these pieces become well? And so <clears> when you <throat> move into newer equipment, that's going to happen automatically because that's just how they're designing equipment now. Um, so that would. I kind think it goes hand in hand as things get newer. They figure out how to design that yeah. so it is more usable. And, so maybe a, a making um, it a point, you know, back to the resolution pa council passed mm -hmm. a few years ago to go above and beyond an ADA compliant. If if we could incorporate something that's specifically ADA accommodating um, for folks, it would be really nice to have. Um, and I think, you know, phasing out the poor and play, you know, it's a it's a good idea. Um, the other thing to note is the city's, the Recreation Department Building Fund has $127,000, and those are basically uh, monies from um, donations, from, 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 you know, year over year. And our goal is to sort of close that account. Um, and the second draft of the budget includes funding uh, a portion of this um, expenditure using the Rec Building Fund, whereas before we had it split between capital projects and tourism funds, <coughs> um, we could use the rec building fund to cover what would come out of the capital projects fund. So it would be mostly a tourism um, funded project. Well, can I ask one, and by the way, I'm not against replacing, I'm just looking for the, sure. uh, the, yeah. the reference points. Um, have, have we ever considered, uh, you know, talking to a few of the businesses around here, you know, I talked to one of the business owners and they said, well, you know, if we put some equipment in the additional equipment in the fitness room, uh, you know, maybe our business would sponsor it. That way I wouldn't have to go to the gym or whatever. But have we ever even considered even approaching, you know, the businesses here, the chamber or some other uh, entities, some of the charitable organizations to see if maybe they would be a private public sponsorship to maybe, you know, buy a piece of equipment for the, you know, it's going to benefit the community. Uh, you know, put your put your name on. I've seen this in other communities where they do the public-private <coughs> sponsorships, and for some of the businesses, you know, this kind of money and the contribution to the community with their visibility on the, you know, they, they might want a little visibility in exchange, but uh, you know, could be a, a a good, very high visible source of funding that other communities have done as well. Has that ever been um, pursued or? Not for capital expended, you know, capital needs. I, you know, there are some events that are sponsored yeah. by um, by bis local businesses. They participate in, again, special events throughout special the year. Events. They sponsor all of our youth sports, but to the to the advertisement on our facilities. Since I've been here, 
previous councils, that hasn't really been a goal yeah, the, the, or a want to have other businesses on. Yeah, I think but, that's been the okay. challenge, the just having a marketing or <laughs> like a, an ad. I mean, we specifically prohibit it on the beach and every pro uh, public property. Um, yeah, soliciting I'm, or advertising. I'm looking at more like a plaque on the, on the equipment where they wouldn't be doing their business, but they basically says it's sponsored by, by. or provided by. That's I've, I've again I've seen that in other communities. Mm -hmm. and, you know maybe if we could get one of the, a couple of the local newspapers to even you know advertise for mm -hmm. it on on our behalf, they'd probably contribute that. Maybe we can see if there's any appetite for it. We could, yeah. yeah. We haven't in the past. I think to your question. No, oh, go ahead, Katie. You're on mute. Don't we? Don't we have like um, bricks? I mean, we do have we do have stuff like that, right? Where people have bought. We've started um, that this year, yes. We've had the engraving, engraved brick program that people can buy and purchase the bricks at the rec center. But none for sponsorship, really. Or individuals, yeah. Individuals. Mm -hmm. Just individuals. Mostly individuals. I, I contribute, yeah. Is there any, uh, any possible grant money out there for playground equipment? So the only one I know of, and I've, I've talked to Janine, is that right, um, <laughs> is the PAR grant, which is... Six thousand dollars, so not not much. Which we get every year. Which we yeah we and I would I would apply for that to go towards this project, but again, that's not a whole lot. And what we've have found in the past, what I recall last time we looked at a grant that was available, it was a a needs based grant, and when they look at the um, demographics here. of our community, that usually um, takes us we from the eligibility. Correct. <laughs> <clears throat> so that would be the challenge, even if there are some available, that's been the roadblock that we have um, encountered yes. in the past. So. so would you all like to, so the second draft of the budget, which we'll discuss tonight, includes the, ex the entire expense, but the funding of that expense is, has changed. So it's between the rec building fund and the tourism funds. We could discuss with council if, if we would like to um, keep it that way and do the entire project at once or if there is more of an appetite to phase out the purchase of the playground equipment versus the poor and play to a later year or even phase out the playground equipment or just defer it all together. I think that that'll be the, the decision point from, from the group tonight. Yeah, I think I'm, I mean, I think as a minimum, I'm kind of where Katie is. Let's, uh, you know, if we're going to consider replacing the equipment, let's maybe figure out a way to try to do that um, and defer the poor and play um, until we figure all that out. And I think if we could look for other sources of funding to help and as well as, I think, to Blair's point, put it out to bid. Mm -hmm. we, um, you know, you're okay with that, Blair? Yeah. yeah. Katie? Sorry. Yes, I think, I think that sounds good. <laughs> okay, so that, that could be a, I don't know if we, we don't need to make that a recommendation. Somebody yeah. just start the, there's lawn equipment, so I'm trying to stay on mute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what we'll do is when we discuss it tonight, we'll just say this was the sort of the consensus of the group to do this with this particular um, expenditure request. Um, the other thing that I wanted to discuss with this committee and get some feedback is when you look at our out years for the recreation department, you'll notice in FY27, we have, in, oh, I'm sorry, uh, yes, in FY27, we have line item 214 in your in your 10 10 year capital plan the covered walkway to front entrance for $250,000 so that was a concept that we had discussed many years ago i think part of the um, i don't was it part of the the master plan for the rec or was it after i think it was part of it originally okay and it, and it got removed from so that it, scope and just kind of added back in into a later year. Correct. So the original master plan included that in, in that entry area to the rec building to be covered. Um, we keep deferring that year over year, and you know I feel like we need to have at least some, and that could be that could change if this committee and council doesn't want to do it. Um, that could change in another year with a, a different council, but. Um, we'd like to get feedback from this group. Is that something that we would like to continue to pursue, keep on our 10-year capital plan, 
um, or just remove it up, up until a time where we identify funds and decide that that's, that's the path. So in the 10-year capital plan that you, have that you have as part of our second draft of the budget, we've removed that so that it doesn't impact our fund balance schedule unless we get direction from council that, that in the community that we, that we want to do that. It's been completely removed. It has been. It's here. Yeah, I think we did. Um, that and the construction fitness room expansion, that's another project that we've sort of <coughs> been deferring. It's always been included in our 10-year capital plan, but no real, you know, no real discussion, commitment of funds towards that. That's a very, I think, low number, to be quite honest, looking at construction costs. We've just been, you know, carrying that number. But that's shown in 220, the line 226 and 227. So one piece would be the expansion, the room expansion, and then the second would be the equipment. Um, this is an, an initiative that we have heard from the community that they would like to see. Right now we have the cardio room. It's very small, limited in its offerings. Um, a few years ago, we did discuss it with the committee. Um, the particularly the reason why we did not pursue it um, in any specific detail is the concern that where the cons the cardio room or the yeah the cardio room would be um, or the fitness room would have to go would require the removal of significant live oaks. Um, it would be uh, to it would be where the next to the dog park. So if you can imagine where the room the the rec center is, it would be on the other side of that long walkway that faces the Magnolia room. Um, and so I think that that was a stumbling block at that point, um, recognizing that those live oaks would have to be removed. So there wasn't any clear guidance direction of pursuing that project. Um, in the 10-year capital plan that you have, it, is it still there? Oh, we did remove it. Yeah. Okay. Well, can I make a suggestion? Okay. Yes. Um, it, it, you know, we've got some fund balance challenges, I think, in the trajectory even with the revised is, you know, we're going to borrow a lot of money. And I think the summary is we're going to borrow a lot of money, but the, the fund balances are still going to be declining based on our revenue projections and all. Would, would it be um, palatable for the committee maybe to take the 250, the 675, the 120, and then we've got the big 3,754 basically, you know, uh, rehabilitating all of the fields just now, which I think we've talked about in an earlier, and maybe push that keep them on the radar but they're going to be out of this budget cycle and put them in the, the fy you know 30 column which keeps us uh you know i think that's gonna would have a pretty positive impact on our fund balance in the in the 25 to 29 trajectory they're still on the radar but there's not something that we're going to you know let let a future council with depending upon where the finances go um, either address those or the opposite side of that is next year we can it's going to hit our cycle again so we can either address them again at that at that point in time but this, this might solve for some of our fund balance depletion that we're currently projecting in the in the current budget scenario so ju just a clarification scott the 3.7 million dollar figure in fy 29 it's associated with the construction of a new gym yes not the so not the rehabilitation of the field no, I understand, but that 375, if I understand, would be in our current um, fund balance calculations and it would be coming out. Isn't it in our 29 it's cycle? It's oh, sorry, you've already pushed From it. the second draft of the budget, oh, we've, removed, okay. we've removed that. Yeah, completely. Okay. I think you made reference to the 3.7, I think, I with the fields. Yeah. So I think it's just the it's the, the new gym. We have removed. I'm looking at what's in our packet. That's the That must be the prior version. Yes, the 375 is included in the 10 year capital plan. It's just associated with the construction of a gym, not uh, the rehabilitation of the fields. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. I missed, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, I read the long line. So, wrong what line. you're looking yeah. at is the draft one. I'm looking at draft one here. Correct. Right. So, anyway, uh, so that's how you're saying. So, yes, so the 3.7 million for the new gym which is an FY29, and the 675 associated with a fitness room expansion and the 120 for the equipment has been removed from the second draft of the 10-year capital plan that it's in the workshop packet. Okay, got it. We, sh we, wanna we wanted to make sure transparently say we've removed it, but make have buy-in from the committee if you all want to keep it or move it to an out year or leave it out unless until we have a council discussion about those two capital items I mean I'm all for keeping them out but that's any, anybody up Blair 
Yeah, I'd keep it as well. The, the, two, the, the 27 expenditures is, adds up to almost a million dollars. I mean, if that's something that's important, you know, perhaps we, you know, that's set aside and we do some kind of a fundraiser to put money towards that and look for grants or whatever, just set it aside as a separate goal. We, we got to raise a million dollars through the rec department. And once we do, then we can have a covered walkway and, and the uh, expanded stuff. I don't know, but yeah, you know, it, it's a lot of money. By the time we, we finish, we're, we're and then with inflation, we'll be well over $5 million by 29. Mm -hmm. And, and maybe we can hear from Carrie. You know, from what we know of our community, what we've heard for in the past, we believe the fitness room would be the the most popular. That would be the one addition. That would, again, that I would recommend that we would keep somewhere in the near future ish, right? Um, that would expand the cardio options. It would also give more of um, universal weight equipment, which we get asked for all the time. Um, as well, so. Yeah, I, I mean, personally, I think we got, just based on where we are right now, I, I, if we want to keep it on the radar, I'm fine with that. I'd just push it out of the cycle and put it into 30. Out of the, our next five-year yeah. forecast cycle. Yeah. Okay. Then it'll, it'll get revisited again next year. Mm -hmm. um, that's really from, a, oh, sorry, Katie. Sorry, I, I agree with that. But. I do. I'm, I am interested. The the covered walkway is that something that I know it was originally in the plan or whatever. But I've I've never thought to myself that it was something that was needed. Um, is that something that residents are asking for? I mean, I, I know that the the fitness stuff is certainly something that people want, but um, no. I mean, I think it's it would be convenient when it's raining. You know, you have that little loop where people could be dropped off and mm -hmm. then. Um, you know, walk under the walkway <laughs> to get to the building, but is it necessary? I, I don't know, Katie. I don't, uh, Carrie, I, you can speak to that. I don't think so. Yeah, I, yeah. If I was, I like if I were going to prioritize, that wouldn't be at, be at the top. Yeah. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that would definitely be a, be, be a nice to have, <laughs> not not a need. Yeah. Are there any other questions? I, I don't want to go just being conscious of time. Each each item just picked a big the big the kind of we were going to talk about I guess the revenue side of things yes so um, I'll just go through now for public works if you all just for Moment revenue for rec center yes we oh, have okay, that on a separate okay. yeah, yeah. Um, so if we look at the public works 10-year capital plan <clears throat> the big ticket items uh, relate to the schedule for replacement of our packer trucks um, as we've talked about moving to preparing for a move towards a side loader operation in some areas of the island to increase efficiencies and address insurance and liability needs uh, we've included in fy26 um, the purchase of one rear loader and one side loader so they're not hitting our fy25 those trucks though would have to be ordered this year to be able to be ready for our delivery in FY26. So the commitment will have to be made? Yes, sir. So, okay. Um, and then we have another one scheduled in FY28 and another side loader um, in FY30. So that would be our next five-year cycle that is impacting our fund balance schedule that Scott referenced earlier. And then the final two would be in FY31 and 33. Now, are we, I think we're, uh, projected and I, we're not we haven't got to the debt schedule yet but are, are these I think we've got an eight eight or nine million dollar projected debt over the over the cycle here that we're looking to take on so you're are these are these funded by debt correct the FY 28 tw uh, the, the second draft of the FY 25 budget assumes borrowing money for the purchase of these trucks yeah I think we've got four four million and 26 we're looking to borrow yeah Yes, because that would include these trucks, a fire truck, and the city hall, um, half of a city hall renovation. Donnie, Robert, where are you? Where are you on the timing of all this, or what do you think? Uh, <clears throat> well, for me, uh, the one thing that I think, and that we got a hundred thousand in the uh, budget for garbage cart replacement. The one thing for me is uh, the island needs to be 
completely uh, free of the older carts before we make the purchase of the side loader uh, because even one side loader uh, and you got the island split in half uh, there's no way to isolate one route that if you only got partial replacement of your carts so um, chronologically speaking I think the the carts need to be replaced on the entire island first cart before the horse I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Very good, Scott. Yeah. So other initiatives in FY25 for the Public Works Department includes the purchase of a used mini excavator, the replacement of our fuel management system and dispensers for 40000 and two F-150. I'm going backwards, but just indulge me. Um, <laughs> and then... Um, a uh, 350 and a 150 truck that need to be replaced. The provision to move our electric lines underground that was included in FY24, we're deferring that to FY25. We anticipate that project being completed this end of this year, but it'll, it'll um, track on FY25. And then the second page for the 10-year capital plan for the Public Works Department, um, addresses drainage needs. So we've included our general drainage contingency for $100,000, $250,000. So this is a change from the first version we discussed a couple months ago. So our next drainage project is going to be drainage improvements on Palm Boulevard between 38 and 41st. Um, looking at a construction design and construction schedule um, in FY25 would happen most of the design and permitting maybe some minimal construction um, as we try to coordinate with some work that the Water and Sewer Commission is doing in that same area. But most of the construction would hit FY26. Um, so you can see how that amount has been split between FY25 and FY26, 250,000 and 1.8 in FY26. We have the drainage maintenance rotation schedule for 195. And then we've rebudgeted the Waterway Boulevard uh, multi-use path in FY25. Um, this is offset, so our, your second draft of the budget includes what would be what we anticipate getting from FEMA as a revenue. Um, 1.1, and our request is for FEMA to cover 90% of that. So when we look at the entire budget, that's that amount, that 1.5 is offset by about $900,000. $900, Quick question on the, we're going to, I think, consider the Thomas and Hutton uh, engineering here in a, in a minute or yes. two. Is that, in, uh, is that in the 250 or is that? That would be part of, the 250. part of the 250. Yes, okay, sir. Thank you. Great. Any other questions on public works? And we have the Alapalms Marina. Here we have rebudgeted the cost of the public green space <clears throat> and $150,000 for the city's portion of uh, a reconfigured parking lot. So we would have $300,000 to do um, if a parking reconfiguration and uh, uh, some green space that would, that would uh, attach to the new public dock that's under construction now. Both of those projects are contingent upon us getting an agreement with the restaurant, right? Correct. How, how, how certain are you that's going to happen in the next 12 months? I have been called a um, obnoxious optimism before. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Optimist. Well, well, there you go. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm hopeful. I, you know, we haven't heard otherwise from the restaurant that, okay. you know, I think we're still waiting on feedback from them on the, I think, version P of the <laughs> parking layout. Um, this would allow, give us the opportunity to have some money uh, right. budgeted if, if we are able to agree on a plan. Um, the TDOC repairs, you all recall, we had $200,000 scheduled, uh, uh, budgeted for that. 
$34,000 worth of repairs are being done now by the same contractor that is replacing the public dock. The marina tenants have requested the city to um, allocate what would have been used to replace the water and the electrical systems for that dock. Um, rather than doing that, they don't have a need for that. Uh, rather than doing that, to use that money to extend the finger piers um, in the, on the T dock. So we would be doing that work after the season. That's why we've um, budgeted 166000 to FY25. We have $50,000 as a marina maintenance contingency, and that would be used for areas that are not covered by leases, and $50,000 for marina dredging. Um, we receive a million five uh, grant from SCPRT for this project. We anticipate this next fiscal year to be pretty much all work related to the permit, and construction of that project is scheduled and budgeted for FY25. I'm sorry, FY26. And I don't recall, is the, is the offsetting revenue for the grant in, in there too? It is, sir. All right, <clears throat> for beach maintenance, we have $500,000 for replace, repair, add dune walkovers. So we um, received $500,000 this year from the state to add two ADA compliant boardwalks. Can I bring us back? I sure. apologize for this. No, no, the no. recoat of the marina bulkhead is in 27. That's 450. Is that still necessary, required, a good number? What are your thoughts on all that? So what, the last time we did it was maybe five years ago. That's when we placed it in FY27. You know, what we would do in FY26, just do an assessment, hire ATM or another vendor to do an assessment and tell us um, condition and whether or not it's needed or it could be deferred. So. We haven't done that yet, and we, we, but we would next year um, before we build FY27. And that would be a city responsibility. Yeah, and the, only, the only reason I'm asking, I think 27 is the year we really mm -hmm. have a weight on our fund balances. <laughs> yes, I think moving, moving uh, the rec department, um, those three projects, That'll help. That'll help. Okay. Yeah, generally, the, 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 what's impacting FY27 is the beaches. The beach nourishment. <laughs> That's really. And our marine equipment never seems to go quite as long as we would okay. want it to go. I mean, mm -hmm. it's kind of the, the opposite, unfortunately. They generally, the engineers are optimistic when they, when they tell us how and I don't know we've ever had one go much longer than that. <laughs> Three years. Um, all right. So under beach maintenance, we have uh, budgeted the expenditure of their grant for the two ADA board walkovers that we received from the state this year. Set by grant revenue in FY25. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the emergency vehicular access project at the county park. That's a deferment. We had it for two hundred thousand. We believe it'll be more expensive, so we budgeted two hundred thousand. Um, we've already approached um, county for um, funding assistance of that project. Um, we're working with with our team um, to get for for the city to cost share that with the county. Um, and this will be this will allow us to. Um, avoid using the Fifth Avenue, ninth, um, which we know uh, can sometimes have significant drop-offs due to um, erosion. And then we have a placeholder of $15,000 for Moby Mat material um, as needed. <clears throat> um, for FY25 under beach maintenance, we have the uh, permitting, design permitting phase for the large offshore projects, and that would include both the north and the south end. We've included here $400,000 for the Army Corps of Engineers breach inlet project, so that would be 
what would be the city's project in coordination with the Army Corps after the Army Corps um, does their part. We anticipate, we have a, a pre-construction meeting tomorrow with the Army Corps. Um, they've, already, uh, um, they've already entered into a contract with ATNA and anticipate, they anticipate the you know, sand being moved mid to late May, so next month. So this will likely fall into FY25, our FY25 budget. So if we've included what we estimate would be the city's portion. Um, we have the shoal management project in Wild Dunes. Um, that, has, that application has been submitted. And that $180,000 is the, it's what, it's 25% of the estimated cost of that project. Um, and again, we're making assumptions based on the city's participation in prior projects within Wild Dunes due to the fact that they don't completely meet the public access definition. Um, the city's participation would be, would be capped at 25%. That's how this budget is built on. Then we have an FY26, um, what would be a follow-up shore management type project for the south end. I know it's listed under the same line item, but we have that in FY26. If we, you know, there's been discussions about how long the benefit of the Army Corps project that is happening this summer, how long that benefit will last. So we're, we're including 356, 350,000 for next year in the event that we do need to do um, a project on the south end quicker than maybe a larger project, which is included in FY27. I think to your point, Scott, in FY27 is when we are anticipating two large offshore projects. Um, and we, you know, this is, you know, a planning document, right? It could sure. be yeah. that, you know, the shore management project in Wild Dunes adds us five years to the life of that original project. It may not. We're, that's why FY27 feels comfortable to give us some wiggle room in the event that we have to act quicker um, on both ends for larger scale offshore projects. Is there, just a curious question, is there any way that we could, while the Army Corps is here, is there anything they can do on the inlet management or is that a whole separate project? Like you're thinking there might be more additional work if it continues to erode? Or is there something we could enlist them to do to shore, shore us up on that end a little bit more? Enlist who? The Army Corps. Or they're, because are they, they're, they're really going to be delivering sand. Is there any more they can do to help us on, on that? We've asked, their scope is very limited, and that's approved at a higher, a higher level. Um, I, we can certainly ask. I, I know Stephen has be been working with that. Them. Yeah, yeah they'll we, be here. Why don't we defer that conversation? Mm -hmm. okay. um, but anyway, I think we have we have funds allocated in the next three years for give us to give us the flexibility as these ideas flush out about what could be done after we do the Army Corps project. We would have. I have a question on the fund balance. I think we're still showing uh, it goes negative about four point eight million dollars again in twenty seven. Mm -hmm. And how do we? I mean, we really can't. We can't go negative. Sure. We have to finance it, or we're going to have to move money from other funds, and that's not reflected currently in our budget scenario, which is, again, it's probably understating. It's understating uh, either our financing costs to cover it, or it's overstating these other fund balances because we're, we're showing a negative balance. How are we going to, I mean, I think we ought to correct that, or I don't know if it's a correction, or it's just we really can't show that without showing how we're financing mm -hmm. it. So well, that's part of the conversation tonight with council. You know, we do we want, it, when we made the changes from FY21 to, F, I'm sorry, draft one, FY25 draft one to draft two, we're borrowing some money for some of the capital expenditures. That shows that has the impact of increasing our fund balance in our tourism funds and our capital projects fund. Correct. Um, that would be a decision of council. Do we want to move some of that fund? Do we want to make some transfers from those funds to the beach preservation fee fund or assign some of the expenditure associated with these projects to those funds? Or do we do like other communities have done and issue debt? That's, 
or, uh, or identify. Right, right now, when, when we present tonight at the workshop, we're going to show the fund balances. Mm -hmm. And I think because we've got a negative fund balance of nearly $5 million in the Beach Preservation Fund, we're overstating. All those graphs are overstating. It's an we got an unassigned deficit is really what we had. So that unassigned deficit has to either be assigned or netted up against the others. And, and for us to uh, sort of display that right now, we're showing there's a $5 million gap that has cost associated with it that is not currently in our in our budget. So we've got to we got to figure out. A Correct, and that was you know one of the discussion points is the revenue increase opportunities. Yeah. Do we raise our property tax rate in those years to cover what would be the cost of those beach projects if we issue debt, cover the debt service, or new funds of revenue to cover a seventeen million dollar um, assumed expenditure in FY27. I mean, it's a, it's a big amount. It's a big number. And we, we just it's good to know it. Yeah, we don't we we have not identified how that's going to be covered. Paid. Yeah. Okay. All right. And I don't, I, even even assigning fund balance from our other from our other funds, it's not going to cover that. Well, and I, I don't know that you can transfer we got a th we got 3 million what are we yeah, we don't have enough to transfer we got three seven in the all other funds. And uh, we've got Three six and the Muni eight. I mean, those are they're mm -hmm. all they're all going down. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So that's all. Oh well, no, we have Front Beach, and FY twenty five, we have a resurfacing of the city owned portion of Ocean Boulevard for a hundred, and repair sidewalks for seventy. And then the rest are just ongoing maintenance funds. Where's the uh, which committee does the building show up in? Is that in? Oh, it should be this. It's other funds. It's, it's in the other funds? It's, in, it's mixed. It's mixed in other funds. I don't think it's. Yeah, you I, was have I was looking for the $4 million or the, it, we had two and two or things. So that's shown kind of in the general government um, department, and we put that under admin, but it, okay. it should have been included here. It's under the public services and facilities uh, purview. Um, we have them coming to the next workshop next month to present the options um, for the city hall renovation. Right now, it's the budget is built on an assumption that the cost would be four million dollars, and that would be um, that we would be issuing debt. And for that's them. debt. Yeah, that's debt financed as well. Okay. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Any questions on the ten-year capital plan or requested expenditures? <laughs> All right, do do we keep going or maybe we wait? Well, we next wait. is Hutton. Yes, the next item on the agenda is the discussion of the proposal from Thomas and Hutton for the design, engineering, and permitting of drainage improvement project at Palm Boulevard between 38th and 41st. That's included in your packet. Um, it's 122,000 for them to begin that work. Um, it's uh, we were able to um, our engineers because they also work with the Water and Sewer Commission. They're able to utilize some surveying data that they did for their project that were they're not charging us. So that's why that amount is much lower than we anticipated. Um, so that's an economy that we that we benefit from. Um, but it's we have one hundred and twenty two thousand um, dollars that would require approval from council so that we can enter into that agreement and they can get to work and that project to be ready for construction in FY 26 as we show in our um, that, Capital was, plan. Was that budgeted? Is that in any budgets before 122? N no, it's essentially built into the cost of the entire project that we are estimating at two million dollars. Um, but the 250 in FY25 would cover most of that expenditure. Okay. So we would done? like a recommendation from the committee to approve, and we'll bring it up to council um, next. Make a month. motion. Yeah. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Katie? Aye. All right. Aye. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, um, on to the last item, uh, review of Recreation Department uh, programming fees and just revenues in general. Yes, so um, Carrie and her team put together um, the, um, it's in your packet, I think the last few pages of your packet, um, a list of all of the offerings from the Recreation Department. So that includes special events, special programs, um, athletics, adults, athletics, um, youth athletics, um, summer camps, group fitness classes, and everything in between. <laughs> and um, they've shown the detail of the fees that they uh, charge for those type of, uh, for those offerings. It shows which ones are free, um, those that have a different rate between residents and non-residents. And then the last column shows where we were able to find a like department, like class, that we could compare as much as we can apples to apples. We've included that in that column to show how we compare to other communities or you know, uh, classes offered in the private sector. Um, we couldn't find for every single thing because our rec department is so unique and offers so much. Um, but where we could to compare, we, we've included that. Um, generally, you could see that in those programs, athletics, um, offerings that, that the rec department offers, um, the cost for a resident versus a non-resident, about, it's about a $5 increase for non-residents, um, with the exception of a few. And the reason is uh, because most of the non-residents that participate in our programming are from Sullivan's Island, so have kind of historically been treated um, as sort of residents because our, ch our kids go to their school, so it's sort of a, um, a policy. A friendly. A friendly, <laughs> friendly type right. policy. Um, but that's really the difference between a, non a resident rate and a non-resident rate. Um, <clears throat> are there any specific questions about it? Um, well, for, for me, ho kind of holistically, just to start, um, I mean, the rec center is unbelievable, top shelf, great services. You've been, and since you've come in, you're expanding services dramatically. And we've got a, we've got a fairly aggressive investment plan that would like to be pursued over the next five, 10 years to continue to expand services, expand facilities. Um, you know, this year, I think the projection for investment into the investment and operating costs into the rec center is about $2.1 million. And the, you know, when I look at the revenue stream over the last several years, it seems to be hovering around 200,000. 200, 220 is what's been forecasted. I don't know exactly what all the actions are. So we've got about 10% of the funding coming from revenues this year. And I think, I know we got a big capital year this year. I guess that it's more of a um, uh, goal question. How do we, uh, if we're not raising resident taxes, which is what, goes to the general fund to help fund this, um, but our costs continue to go and we want to continue to you know, escalate investment. We've got a fixed revenue stream, but we've got no, well, we've got escalating operating costs and we want to continue to invest. So the, the, the um, question I have is, you know, how do we maybe take a step back? I don't know if it's a line item, line item, you know, are we charging enough? But are there ways that we can sort of either um, increase that revenue stream, kind of cl start closing that gap or get revenue streams generated where they're either recur more recurring based, uh, you know, work with our uh, non-residents. I, I think we want to give residents the big breaks um, to try to close that, that gap over time and get more revenue uh, that's at least keeping pace with our costs and provide carry with a, you know, a fund to be able to continue to invest. You know, I don't like having these conversations where things are coming for requests and we got to say, you know what, we got to defer, we got to keep going. You know, is it is it time to maybe take a step back and look at, you know, I don't know if we need to get some help looking at this, but, you know, are there other revenue sources through memberships or recurring revenue streams that other communities might be using? Um, and the, I look at the public-private um, uh, relationship. Maybe we can get some outside donations, funding, what have you, to help with these capital projects. So, I, you know, going through line item by line item and tweaking it ten bucks, five bucks, whatever. I don't. That's not going to necessarily get us there. Correct. And I think that the that the purpose of this exercise is frankly to show it, that we're not that far off. Yeah. If we compare our offerings com with other communities, there are some in athletics. Um, summer camps and what was the there was another category that we think we, we definitely can make some adjustments they haven't been changed in 20 years you know over many years um, the instructor programming 
changes every year because that's really driven by the instructor. They get 70% of the total cost. But I think that they're, even myself, under the impression that, oh, we're way, we, we, may, we must be way behind compared to, compared to what these offerings are offered in the private sector. So if you go to a yoga, a yoga studio, you're probably paying the same amount that we are. Um, so there's not a whole lot of opportunity, I think, that would generate a lot of revenue if we make those adjustments. One, most of those that are participating in those are residents. I, you know, we can run that report. The, in the past, there seems to be a perception that um, our rec department is catering to non-residents, and, and that's really not the case. Um, they don't participate in, in, in high numbers. So if we increase non-resident rates, it's really not going to do that much. It's not going to impact our revenues in any significant way. Um, you know, we talked about a cardio room that you know, in Mount Pleasant, I think would make a lot of money in their fitness um, facilities. But you compare what we have, we have two treadmills and maybe one bike in our cardio room. You know, we could charge for the use of that, but you know, it's just not gonna, nobody's gonna be incentivized to pay for that when they can pay for, you know, $50 at a Gold's Gym and, and go there. So I think it, we're limited, I believe. And I think, you know, Carrie can speak to that. With our current facilities, charging more for the use of those, it's just not going to make, it's not going to change the needle that much. Not saying that we should look into it, and I think we've already identified a few programs that, that, that we need to increase, you, you know, just providing for those is more expensive, as you said. Um, but historically, I don't think the city has looked at the recreation center as one that should raise the revenues that cover the operations of it. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not suggesting that. that. There's no way that the rec center, um, you know, I'm not suggesting it be a profit center. It's just that what the reality is is our costs keep going up, but the revenues are not. And we've got, we're just having, I don't know where we get the money to keep covering mm -hmm. without without some kind of a, either change in the paradigm, uh, you know, to try to, Close that gap. Uh, you know, other places do. You know, we may, you know, maybe we need to shift from a free to a, it, it, the city can subsidize, but you know, do we do we look at a, a little different model here mm -hmm. and try to figure out a way to get you know more pay for from visitors or from our non-residents and try to protect the residents with you know some kind of a um, you know, different paradigm. That's all. Mm -hmm. um, I think. I mean, I think you're you're. You're going to be in a really tough position to try to increase revenues with what we've got. I mean, we're, you know, we're not Mount Pleasant. We, you know, I mean, I, I know, for instance, Mount Pleasant Rec rents out their fields to soccer clubs and lacrosse clubs. Well, we, we don't, I don't think there's any interest in doing that on the island. I mean, that, that's a huge moneymaker, but then we wouldn't have our fields anymore. I mean, you know, the, 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 the cardio room, I can't imagine anybody wanting to go spend a lot of money to use that. Now, if we put in some awesome workout facility, then maybe we could, you know, I just, I, I, I like the idea of trying to keep us, um, you know, more consistent with what we're charging, but we also have to understand that we don't, I mean, I, our facility is great, but it's not, it's not the type of place that people are going to pay a lot of money to come use, um, you know, if you're in Mount Pleasant, to leave Mount Pleasant and try to come use our facility, I, you know. And I think to your point, Katie, and this is a, has been looked at in the past, is do we change the paradigm and do make the portions of the recreation center, um, you know, we rent them out to the public. There's some, there's some uh, challenges associated with that. Sh could they be mitigated? Sure. But I think that the concern has been well, how does that translate to the availability of those spaces for the programs and the offerings that the residents like and um, have been accustomed to? You know, the so fields. Also, yeah, and so also to that point to, you know, renting out your fields or renting out your facilities, um, and, we'll, and we'll keep beating Mount Pleasant down for it, but, you know, they have whole departments that take care of their fields. We have one guy. Um, so when you talk about that turnover of usage and prepping fields for uh, travel teams to come in, maintenance goes up. Maintenance goes up. Um, same thing with uh, renting your building; um, your cleaning is going to go up. Uh, but would be more staff to flip those rooms. Right now, we flip the rooms, you know, three and four times a day for whatever classes come in to the next class that comes into the meeting that's held to the next class to go the next day. I mean, we're we're doing that. 
Um, so to have somebody else come in and rent those, that's, that, that's more people, that's more maintenance, that's going to be damage to the building. And, so and that so, leaves us with so, generating more general fund revenues. Really, mm -hmm. what it does. I mean, unless we change, unless I mean, I think it, I'm, I, I don't think we're saying we would be opposed to it. It's right. just it's it There's would be a change. That would need to correct. It would be know. a change in use, a change in policy that in the past it hasn't been um, um, embraced by council, just because of the availability. We've never really done an anal a financial analysis of what we would potentially generate, offset the you know the the, the increase in maintenance and maybe lack of. Um, availability that certainly could be a path that we do that would be the foundation you know it would be important information to know before we make any final decisions but it, it would it would any any significant amount of revenue would come from renting the facility renting the fields renting tennis courts for tournaments and that just has not been part of the you know puck sort of way that the director of the department has ever operated and that would be a change we certainly could look into it i don't think we would be opposed if it makes sense i'm, I'm just presenting the issue that we're, that we're facing and mm -hmm. we either figure out a way to get more revenues from the center or we've got to raise more revenue from other sources you know, yes and continue to sub system. basically yeah. general fund continues to subsidize the recreation department yeah. um but from a fee perspective you know we certainly can make adjustments and can do that across the board um, identify those that, that were low, but just not going to move the needle. I'm not saying, yeah, I think we should continue, we should pursue it just because, you know, everything is more expensive. Um, but I think it's just, we're, we're limited in the options that we have to do that okay. with our current facilities. Blair? No. Katie? Okay. Uh, right. Yeah, that's, I'm, I'm good. All right. Uh, miscellaneous business, next meeting's 9 o'clock on uh, Tuesday, May 7th. If there's no other business. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.